This is the second talk about basic electronics in clinical neurophysiology. The purpose of this talk is to explain the math involved in calculating the value of the different elements in multiple resistors that record in circuits. I'd like to start by telling you that you must have a clear understanding of the calculations required for determining voltage, resistance, current, and power in single resistor direct current circuits to be able to understand this talk. So, it is of paramount importance that before viewing this video, you look at the first video about single resistors direct current circuits. The title of the video is Electricity P1. The next thing I want to tell you is that configuration of the circuit, a fact that can be ignored in single resistor direct current circuits, cannot be ignored when examining multiple resistors direct current circuits. It is for this reason that I will initiate this discussion talking to you about circuit configuration. In this frame, I have introduced a single resistor direct current circuit. In it, we see two elements, a battery representing the voltage source and a resistor representing a voltage drop. In this new frame, I have introduced the first type of multiple resistors direct current circuit. It consists of a series resistors direct current circuit. Now I have introduced a parallel resistors direct current circuit and at the bottom of the frame I have introduced a combined resistors direct current circuit. Now that we have represented the configuration of these circuits, I'd like to tell you about two key points. The first key point about configuration relates to voltage. I'd like to remind you that the voltage of the rail highlighted by the yellow underlining in the single resistor direct current circuit is that of the negative pole or anode of the battery. Let's say 10 volts if the battery is a 10 volt battery. Whereas the voltage of the rail highlighted by the magenta or the lining is that of the positive pole of the battery, that is zero volts. If we follow the same rationale, it is easy to understand that when dealing with multiple resistors direct current circuits, voltage behave in a similar fashion. The voltage to the first resistor or resistors starting from the anode in all multiple resistor direct current circuits, which I have highlighted by yellow underlining will have the same volts as the anode of the battery. To continue using the same number, let's say 10 volts. Whereas the rails on the side of the positive side of the battery, the cathode, with direct uninterrupted continuity with the battery will have zero volts. In this frame, I, I have highlighted them by the magenta on the ground. As you can see, it is only 
for the wires between two resistors that we will not be able to deduce the voltage of the wire just by knowing the voltage of the battery. It is at this point that we have to understand the concept of voltage drop. So if you do not understand the concept of voltage drop, make sure that you go back to the first lecture on resistors to learn it. The second key point about configuration relates to current. The current in the single resistor direct current circuit has the same value at all points in the circuit. Remember the analogy I told you about the river. If a river has the same width from its birth to its arrival at the sea, the amount of water will be the same throughout the river. The current in the series resistors direct current circuit also has the same value at all points, just as the single resistor direct current circuit had. That is because there is only one path for electricity to travel. The current in a parallel resistor direct current circuit has more than one pathway. Therefore, it decreases as it goes further from the anode in a way proportional to the branching of the resistors as it would be expected of the water flowing in a river with many tributaries and increases that is, and the amount of current increases as it goes closer to the cathode. The current in a combined resistor direct current circuit behave as suggested by its name with beha behavior befitting of a parallel and a series circuit. Once we have considered configuration, we must consider the laws. The laws we need to consider are four. The first two are all friends. That is Ohm law, which we have studied based on the magic triangle, and Joule's law which we have also reviewed based on the Joule's Law Magic Triangle. In addition to these all laws, in order to understand the calculation required to determine the values of the different elements in multiple resistor circuits, we must understand two new laws. They are nothing more than the wording for the mathematical adaptation of the configuration of multiple resistor direct current circuits that we addressed initially in this talk. These laws, that is the law three and four, were introduced by Kirchhoff, so they are called Kirchhoff's laws. And there is one for current stated in this frame by the phony E and the following letters, which implies that the sum of all current going in at one point of a circuit and going out from the same point of the circuit must be zero and one for voltage, which is the voltage law, which imply that the sum of all the voltage going into a circuit and the sum of all the voltage going out of the circuit must be zero. 
both of these laws will be addressed more thoroughly uh, in this next section of this talk. Just remember that they are just the mathematical adaptation to the behavior of current and volt dictated by the electrical circuit configuration. As I just mentioned, we will expand on this later on in this talk. From this point on, this talk will be conducted in a question and answer format and will be divided in two sections. The first section is about fundamentals. The first question is direct current comes from wall electrical sockets. A true, B false. Direct current comes from batteries. And batteries are represented by two lines of different length or more than two lines, but with each pair having different length, as you can see in this frame. Alternating current come from wall electrical sockets or receptacles, and is represented by a sinusoidal line within a circle. So the answer to this question is B, false. Next question. Which is the symbol for an open circuit, A or B? Short circuit is a closed circuit that has very little resistance. It permits large amount of current to go through. A closed circuit allows current to flow but has some resistance. An open circuit has infinitely large resistance and therefore current does not flow. So the answer to this question is A. Next question, which of the following Diagram represents a parallel circuit. In series circuit, electricity only has one path. Parallel circuits have branches. A branch is a place where current has to make a choice and must decide which way to go. Combined circuit resistors have features of both series and parallel circuits. So the answer to this question is D. Next question. Which of the following is the positive rail in the circuit below? A, B, C or D. The rails of a parallel circuit are labeled by the charge of the batteries. The rail of the positive side of the battery, here represented by the green underground color, is called the positive rail. The rail on the negative side of the battery, here represented by the yellow on the ground color, is called the negative rail. The elements going from one rail to the other, not in direct continuity with the rails, are called branches. So the answer to this question is A. Next question. Kirchhoff current law states that, that the algebraic sum 
of all currents meeting at any point in a circuit must be a less than the sum b zero c one d more than their sum Kirchhoff was a German physicist he described the current law for electricity this current law states that the sum of all currents flowing into and out of a node is zero the key word here is node the symbol that looks like a funny e stands for the sum of all so this is a way of saying the same thing the sum of all currents going into and out of a node is zero so the answer to this question is B zero the parity Kirchhoff current law and the association Kirchhoff current law contradict each other A true B false we already mentioned the Kirchhoff parity law it states that what comes in must go out the Kirchhoff dissociation current law expresses the same thing the current getting to one node must be equal to the one coming out even when there is mo more than one pathway for that current Kirchhoff current associative or association law states that all current from different sources when coming together at the nodal point must leave that nodal point so the answer to this question is false next question Kirchhoff current law states all of the following except a all currents meeting at one place in a circuit add to zero b the sum of incoming current is equal to the sum of outgoing currents c the sum of the voltage drop across the all resistors equal the voltage in the battery d current in is equal to current out Kirchhoff current law is the basis for the parity law the dissociative law and the associative law so the answer to this question is C next question the parity Kirchhoff current law applies to series circuits A true B false this diagram represents a series circuit current only has a single path thus can only travel in one direction if we have a 3 amp current the current will tra travel in the direction of the green arrow all around the circuit returning to the battery with exactly the same amp that it left so the current at point 1a is going to be the same as the current 
in point 1b and the same as the current in 1c. Hence, the parity current law works for series circuit and is the only one of the current laws that need to be applied when solving a series circuit calculation. So the answer to this question is A. Next question. The parity dissociative and associative Kirchhoff current laws apply to parallel circuits. A, true, B, false. This is a representation of a parallel circuit with two resistors of equal ohms. We are going to represent the flow of current as traveling in the conventional direction. The current at point 1A is the same as the current at point 1B. Hence, the parity current law works for parallel circuit. When the electricity reaches the first fork in a parallel circuit, current must go through both routes. If both resistors are of the same value, it must divide equally. So 1.5 amp will go in one direction and 1.5 amps in the other direction. So the current at point 1A will be 3 amps. The current at point 1B will be 1.5 amp. And the current at point 1C will also be 1.5 amp. Therefore, the current at this junction will be consistent with the dissociative law. After the current divides, it will continue moving through each of the pathways. And the pathway will rejoin at one point as indicated by the arrow. At that point, the total current will continue to move towards the battery. Thus, the current at point 1B will be 1.5 amp. The current at point 1C will also be 1.5 amp. These currents will join and the current at 1A will therefore be 3 amps. In this fashion, the current associative law will be also met. So the answer to this question is A. True. Next question. Any farm boy understands Kirchhoff current laws? A. True. B. False. I am going to bring the analogy of the river to explain the Kirchhoff current laws. The parity law implies that the same amount of water going through a conduit in a river has to be the same amount of water coming out of it. The dissociation law can be explained by saying that where the river forks, the water will get distributed accordingly. The association law states that where the river unite, the amount of water from all the tributaries must get back to the river. So 
the answer to this question is A. True. Next question. Kirchhoff's voltage law states that in a res resistive circuit, the algebraic sum of all voltages drop is dash the voltage source of the system. A more than B less than C equal to. Kirchhoff also dictated the law referring to voltage. The sum of all voltage steps, that is the voltage sources and the voltage drop, around a complete circuit must be zero. The key words here are around a complete circuit. These words are important because in contrast to Kirchhoff current law that refers to a node, that is, to a point in the circuit, the voltage law refers to the whole circuit. Kirchhoff voltage law can be synthesized as you can see in this frame. So the answer to this question is C equal to. Next question. Kirchhoff voltage law works for serial, parallel, and combined circuits. A true, B false. Let's start by reminding you of the Kirchhoff voltage law. This law states that the sum of all voltage steps, that is sources and drops around a complete circuit, must be zero. Here we are measuring the voltage source of a series circuit. And on the other side, we are measuring the voltage drop. We can represent this action mathematically as VA plus VB equal to zero. Notice that the asterisk implies positive and negative charges. The same mathematical equation can be used for parallel circuits. The voltage of the source is obviously the same as the voltage drop. Again, notice the positive and negative signs in the voltmeters. What is more difficult to accept as true is that the voltage drop in every branch is the same as the voltage in the source. This reality stems from the nature of electricity. Electricity maintains the same voltage up until it is interrupted by an element. In this case, the elements are resistors. Kirchhoff voltage law also apply to combined circuits. So the answer to this question is true. Next question. Kirchhoff laws adapted to the type of circuits dictates the rule of serial and parallel circuits calculation. A true, B false. Kirchhoff's laws apply to serial, parallel, and combined circuits, but they need to be adjusted to the configuration of each type of circuit. As you can see in this frame, I have only represented a series circuit and a parallel circuit. I have not represented a combined circuit because they are subject to the same adjustment than series and parallel circuits combined. The adaptation of Kirchhoff's laws to the configuration of the circuit allows us to calculate 
the values of electromotive force, current, and resistance for each resistor. The statement in this frame establish a very important point. Take a moment to read it. Now look at the diagram of the series circuit. The green arrow is pointing to R1. The implication of this labeling is that it is the first resistor in the path of the current. Remember, current travels in a clockwise direction. On the other hand, had we chosen to label the resistor based on the direction of the circulation of electrons instead of labeling R1 as such, we would have labeled it R2. And the label of R1 would have been given to the other resistor. It is important to understand and remember that once we decide to designate a resistor as R1 or R2, that same designation has to be used for all calculations of all the factors in that circuit. That includes electromotive force, current, and resistance. As you can see, I have introduced a new frame with three columns. I will use this new frame to highlight the rules needed to calculate electromotive force, current, and resistance. In a series circuit and in parallel circuits, these rules are based on the Kirchhoff laws. I will start by the application of Kirchhoff voltage law. The rule for calculating volts in a series circuit rests on the principle that the total volt is the sum of all the volts drop in each resistor. The rule for calculating volts in a parallel circuit rests on the principle that the total volts has the same value as the volts flowing in each resistor. The adaptation of the current laws for series and parallel circuits also creates distinct operational methods for each type of circuit. The rule for calculating current in a series circuit rests on the principle that the total current has the same value as the current flowing in each resistor. The rule for calculating currents in a parallel circuit rests on the principle that the total current is the sum of the current flow flowing through each resistor. The rule for calculating resistance also varies according to the circuit. The rule for calculating ohms in a series circuit rests on the principle that the total ohms has the value of the sum of all the ohms in each resistor. The rule for calculating ohms in a parallel circuit rests on the principle that the total ohms is determined by finding the reciprocal of the reciprocal of each resistor and adding them up. I have taken a long time to describe this frame. 
or, or this set of frame because I will use it very often during the rest of this talk. Now I will introduce the question that started all. Read it again and try to answer it. The answer is A, but remember that the resistors rules are not based on Kirchhoff laws. Next question. To comply with Kirchhoff's current law as it applies to resistors circuit in series, the current through each resistor must be added to determine the total current. A true, B false. As you recall, Kirchhoff current law states that the sum of all current going into and out of a node must be zero. The current law, when applied to a resistor series circuit, it implies that all resistors share the same current. So the answer to this question is true. Next question. To comply with Kirchhoff current law as it applies to resistor circuit in series, the current through each resistor must be equal to the total current. A true, B false. Kirchhoff current law when applied to resistor in series implies that all resistors share the same current. As stated by the current law, when dealing with series resistor circuits, all resistors share the same current as we, as we have just previously said. Thus, the amps going into a node are the same as the amps going out of a node. Describing current as traveling from positive side of the battery to the negative side as depicted by the arrow, we can say that all resistors have been placed in this example, in the positive rail. The positive rail is called so because of it being on the positive side of the battery. I have in this frame underlined the positive rail with a green thick line. But it would not have mattered if the resistor could have been placed on one side of the diagram or in the negative rail of the circuit. What I will do now is give you an example using numbers. If 6 amps are getting in a resistor, 6 amps must be getting out of the resistor. If the current going out of the battery is 6 amps, then the current going back to the battery has also to be 6 amp. So the answer to this question is A. Next question. To comply with Kirchhoff current law as it applies to resistor circuit in parallel, the current to each resistor must be added to determine the total current. A true, B false. Again, the current law states that the sum of all current going in and out of a node is zero. When the Kirchhoff current law is applied to a parallel resistor circuit, the result is that the total current is equivalent to the sum 
of all the currents going through each resistor. I will expand on this thought in the following frames. This frame introduces the same principle I have just stated. That is, that when we apply the current law, which is here indicated by the arrow, toward solving the values of the resistor in a parallel circuit, the current of each resistor, that is resistor 1, resistor 2, and resistor 3, must be added. So the total amps, that is the amps close to the battery, leaving from the positive side of the battery and returning to the negative side of the battery must be the same. I will expand again on this concept for a second time to make sure I make myself clear. It is important to relate the direction of current to the positive and negative rails of the diagram. If we consider current as traveling from the positive to the negative pole of a battery, as indicated by the golden arrow, the current must dissociate after each branch on the positive rail and associate after each brand of the negative rail. In order to understand this statement, it is best to analyze the current going through the last resistor first. We can see that from the positive side of the battery, current must travel through the positive rail, the end resistor, and back to the battery through the negative rail in order to complete the circuit. The current traveling through the middle resistor also has to travel from the positive rail of the circuit through the middle resistor and back through the negative rail to reach the battery. And so does the current traveling through the resistor closest to the battery. It has to travel through the positive rail of the circuit, through the first resistor, and back through the negative rail. If we place a value for current going through each resistor at 6 amps, Thus, we can see the current from each resistor is adding up in the negative rail as the current approaches the negative side of the battery. At each branching point, that is, between the last and the middle resistor at the junction, and at the middle and first resistor junction, the amps will add up. We can then represent this mathematically by simply adding the values of each resistor. Thus leading to the total current, which is 18, whereas in the middle segment of the negative rail, it is 12, and in the last segment of the negative rail, it is 6. This value could be the same as you can see in the positive rail. So the answer to this question is true, A. Next question. To comply with the Kirchhoff voltage law as it applies to resistor circuits in series, the voltage 
through each resistor must be added to determine the total voltage. A true, B false. When the Kirchhoff voltage law is applied to a circuit in series, the implication is that the total current is equivalent to the sum of all the currents going through each resistor. This figure depicts the effects of the Kirchhoff voltage law. On your left side, you have a voltmeter indicating the volts from a voltage source. On your right side, you have a voltmeter indicating the voltage drop that corresponds to the voltage source. Mathematically, it is simply expressed by adding of the voltage source to the voltage drop of all the resistors together, which should add up to zero. Or, if each resistor is measured separately, as indicated in this frame, they should also be added and ultimately they will add to zero. It can be simply expressed as the sum of all voltages equal to zero in a circuit with a resistor in series. So the answer to this question is A. True. The next question is, to comply with Kirchhoff voltage law as it applied to resistor circuit in parallel, the voltage through each resistor must be added to determine the total voltage. A true, B false. As you remember, the K voltage law states that the sum of all voltage steps that is sources and drop around a complete circuit must be zero. When the Kirchhoff voltage law is applied to a circuit in parallel, the result is that the total voltage is equivalent to the voltages going through each resistor. In this frame, I am depicting this principle by placing the probes from the voltmeter at the source and after all elements. It is important to notice that the signs are opposite. I have conveyed this idea by using asterisks. The arrow points to the mathematical expression of this law. Here I have used the voltmeter in each branch before and after each resistor to depict the fact that so measured each branch has the same numbers as the source but in an opposite value. The arrow indicates the mathematical expression of this law in this instance. This frame depicts the same concept that when dealing with volt and parallel circuits, the voltage at each branch is the same as the voltage at the source. The analogy I use to visualize this concept is the labeling of water represented by the blue thick line when poured into a compartmental basin. In this situation, the pressure of the water is the same regardless where it is measured. And so are the volts when we compare the negative rail 
which is here indicating 6 volts with the positive rail here indicate, indicating no volts. So the answer to this question is false, B. Kirchhoff wrote a law for the value of resistance. A, true, B, false. The total resistance of a series resistor circuit is equal to the sum of all the individual resistors in the circuit. The total resistance of a parallel resistor circuit is equal to the sum of all the reciprocals of the individual reciprocal of each resistor in the circuit. Since my friend, the inquisitive monkey, does not understand it, I will attempt to explain it better. Let's start talking about conductance. Conductance is inversely proportional to resistance. In a more mathematical term, conductance is the reciprocal of resistance. So it follows that the total conductance is equal to the sum of the individual conductance of each resistor. The pile analogy works well for this explanation. If we have a pail full of water with one tiny hole, the pail will empty, let's say, in about half an hour. If in addition to the one hole we make another hole the same size, the pail will empty in half the time that is in 15 minutes. But if instead of opening a hole the same side of the first hole, we open a hole double the size, the pail will empty in 7 minutes that is in about half what it was before. So there is no doubt that the total conductance is equal to the sum of all the individual conductance. But now let's think about the relation between conductance and resistance. When a pail has one hole there is only one path for, for the water to flow because the rest of the bottom of the pail has infinite resistance. When we open a second hole, we are creating a new path for the water. Hence, although the hole may be small, it has less resistance than the infinite resistance that was there at the site of the hole before the hole was created. So the total resistance will significantly decrease. And if instead of opening a small hole, we make one hole twice as big, the resistance of the pail to the flow of water will even be less. It is important to recognize that the total resistance of a pail is less than the resistance of the biggest hole made in the pail. So remember this rule. When resistors have the same resistance, just divide the value of one resistor by the number of resistors you find in the total circuit. The classic question in this regard is two electrodes five centimeters apart of a thousand ohms each are connected to a patient by a wide jumper to a common ground. What is the value of the ground? The answer is 500. 
ohms because in this case both resistors are the same a thousand and since we said that what we have to do is divide it by the number of resistor and there are only two resistors then the, res the answer is 500 ohms on the other hand if the resistors have different ohms just remember that the total resistance has to be less than the smallest of the resistors. These two facts will help you answer many questions regarding resistance in electrical circuits in parallel. Let me just tell you that Kirchhoff did not make this law. So the answer to this question is false. Next question. Calculating serial and parallel total voltage require the same mathematical operations. A true, B false. As you can see by looking at this frame, there are quite a number of components in it. And therefore, we need to have a system in order to memorize them. The system that I have starts by using the letters VEP because they remind me of visual evoked potential to convey the voltage law in case of parallel circuits. As it stands, I use V for voltage, E for equal, and P for parallel. Once I remember these letters, I jump to the voltage law in the case of serial circuits, and I remember it by the letters VAS. V again stands for voltage, A for adding, and S for serial or series. I then jump to current and I use the letters I, E, S to remind me of what occurs with current when being uh, introduced to a series circuit that is current equal in series circuit. Then I jump to current in parallel circuits and to remember those I use the letters IAP which means current at in parallel. Going on I use the letters RAS to remember what occurs with resistance in a series circuit, which is that resistors add in series circuit. And finally, I consider resistors in parallel circuits as the funny mathematical equation of the punch. So the answer to this question is B false. This concludes the section on fundamentals. I will now start the second section. It is about applications. Probably the most important fact to remember when attempting to solve an electri electrical circuit problem is that when it comes to applying the Ohm's law, each element has to be treated separately. In this talk, since we are talking about resistors, we could substitute the word element for resistor. It is convenient when solving problems dealing with resistors circuit to start by constructing a grid giving each resistor a column and creating an additional column for the total resistance. Let's say that we are trying to 
solve a problem with three resistors. Then we will create four columns, one for each resistor and one for the total resistance. Next, we introduce three rows. We label the first one E, indicating electromotive force, which, as you know, is given in volts. We label the second row I for current, which, as you know, is given in amps. And we label the third column R for resistance, which, as you know, is measured in ohms. So, when done, we end up with 12 cells. The filling of these cells is then done considering the data at hand. First, by a judiciously applying Kirchhoff laws and a few mathematical principles to determine two of the three factors in each column, and then by using Ohm laws independently in each column to find the third and missing factor. So here goes the first question of this section. What is the voltage drop at R1, R2 and R3 given the diagram that is presented in this frame? A, B, C, or D. In this frame, I have listed the seven steps needed to calculate all values referring to resistor series circuit problems. I do not want you to read all the items at this time. Please only read them as their color change. First, filling the data from the problem to the grid. The values provided in the diagram should be transferred to the appropriate location in the grid, as we have done in this frame. Once the values have been placed in their appropriate cells, the next step is to apply the resistance rule for series circuit. To find the total resistance. This frame indicates what is the rule applied to do so. So we add them up and get for 450. Notice that now we know two of the possible three factors of the total resistance column. Having completed the second step, we take the next step. We apply Ohm law to the total resistance column. This is an important concept that although mentioned already, I will mention again, once two of the cells are filled in a column, we apply the Ohm law to fill the empty cell. So from here, we apply the Ohm's law to figure out the amps in the total column by using the Mike triangle and executing the operation. And so the total current of the circuit will be known, which in this case will be 0.02 amps. The next step is to apply current rule for resistors in series circuit, which is listed below also in blue and is shown here in the frame that has all of the factors together so you can take a look 
in one go at all of them. So going back to the grid, applying the rule for current in series circuit, as you see below, all the amps at the level of R1, R2 and R3, therefore are the same as the one at the amps in the total column following the rule for current in resistor series. After applying the current rule, we apply the ohm's law to the volts in the first resistor column by using the magic triangle, we execute the operation and place the result in the appropriate cell. Next, after applying Ohm law to R1 column, we apply Ohm law to R2 column. As you can see in this frame, we use the same operational principle to determine Ohm law and the result will be 6 volt. After applying Ohm law to, R, to the R2 column, we apply the Ohm law to R3 column. Again, we use the magic triangle and execute the execution would yield one volt. We confirm that we're right by checking our operation with the master figure that shows all the operations needed to solve resistor circuits. In this question, we were dealing with series circuit. In a series circuit, the total electromotive force is equal to the sum of all electromotive forces. The total current is the same as the individual current, and the total resistance is equal to the sum of all the resistance. So translating this information to the degree we have that electromotive force adds current is equal and resistance adds all this confirms the figure we have obtained by following the seven step we originally set out to do in order to calculate the missing values in this problem. So the answer to this question is B. Next question. What is the total resistance in this circuit? Take a look at the diagram and try to answer a, B, C, or D. The steps to follow when determining the values of a resistor parallel circuit are also seven. First, we will introduce the data into the grid. As you can see, in this frame, the data has already been introduced at the appropriate cells. Once this is done, you apply the voltage rule for parallel circuits, which state that the volt going through each resistor is the same as the total volts. As you can see, I have added this law at the bottom of this frame. Since we know 
that the total volt is 6, then we know that each electromotive resistor cell is also 6. After applying the voltage rule, we use the Ohm law to solve the first resistor. As we can see in this frame, we have to execute the Ohm law to determine the current at R1. In this frame, you can see the current in the first resistor. The result is 0 0.006 amp. After applying it to the first resistor, we do the same with the second resistor, thus we can fill the second column. The application of the Ohm law in this frame is executed and as you can see is 0 0.002 amps. After the R2 column, we do the same operation in the R3 column. We place the value in the proper cell after executing the operation. After the fifth step, we take the sixth step. The sixth step consists of applying the current rule for parallel circuits. The rule is that the total current is equal to the sum of all the currents of the individual resistors. So I have introduced uh, the rule in the lower segment of this frame, adding the current in all the resistor give us the total current which is 0 0.011 after doing this operation the only thing we have to do is take the seventh step which is to apply Ohm law to obtain the total resistance Remember that the total resistance has to be less than that of the lowest resistor. In this case, we do we apply Ohm law, it would yield the number corresponding to that cell in ohms. So the answer to this question is B. And as we did with circuit in series, we ask ourselves the same question, and that is, are we right? And we make sure it is so by looking at the grid based on the rules of operation that we have so often seen in the master rule figure. So, electromotive force is equal in all cells current adds up its value and the total resistance has to be subtracted from the lowest resistor. Therefore, the total resistance has to be less than the least resistor. Next question, what is the current through R4? A77 milliamps, B, 86 milliamp, C, 34 milliamp, D, 44 milliamps. The analysis of a combined resistance circuit requires a special grid. Initially, it has all the same characteristics we found in the previously controlled grid. In this case, since there are four resistors, there will be four columns, one for each resistor, and in addition, a fifth column for total resistance. These columns will be crisscrossed by three rows, one for 
electromotive force, one for current and the other one for resistance. But in addition, the manipulation of combined circuit requires the creation of two additional columns. The first column will combine the first pair of resistors. The second column will combine resistor 3 and 4. The steps needed to calculate the combined circuit values are 12. In this frame I have listed 5 and the rest I have listed in the frame you're looking at at the moment. As I did last time, I don't want you to read them. I would like you to read them only when they change color. So the first step is to fill in the data in the grid. Is in this frame, the known values are introduced, and that is the resistance at R1, R2, R3, and R4, and also the total voltage. Once this is done, the next step is to apply the resistance rule for parallel circuits to each resistor pair. It consists on finding the reciprocal of the sum of the reciprocal. Such operation yields 71 for the R1 R2 pair and 127 for the second pair. Having done this, the next step is to apply resistance rule for series circuit to the R1, R2 pair and the R3, R4 pair. This consists of adding all the resistors to get the total resistance. So RT is determined by adding 71 to 127, therefore yielding 198 ohms. Notice that in this frame I have created a new midline resistor in each pair to indicate their combined value but more importantly to imply that for the purpose of following of the following steps we should consider the circuit as represented by resistor circuits in series. Once this is accomplished we move to a step 4. A step 4 consists in applying Ohm's law to the total column in order to determine the amps. So executing this operation, the result is 0.121 amps. The next step is to apply the current law for series circuit to R1, R2 pair and R3, R4 pair. This rule states that the total current is equal to the current of each resistor. So since the current for the total resistor is 0.1 to 1, then the current going through R1, R2, it also has to be 0.1 to 1, and so has to be the column for R3 and 4. 
after this the next step is to apply the own law and execute it for the column in R1 and R2. This will yield 8.59 volt. After the sixth step, we take the seventh step, which is to apply the Ohm law to R3, R4 column. The execution of this will be 15.4 volts. After step seven, a step eight is to apply the voltage rule for parallel circuit to determine the voltage in R1, R2, R3, and R4. To comply with this rule of electromotive force in parallel, we must, in the context of this operation, to establish the value of R1 and R2 combine and consider the same as total for the individual resistor and do the same thing with R3 and R4. This will become clear in the next frame. So as you can see, the number for R1, electromotive cell, and for R2, electromotive cell, is 8.6. That is the same as it was for the combined R1 and R2. And following the same principle, we place the same number in the R3 cell and R4 cells as we did for the combined R3 and R4 pairs. After this operation, the following step consists of applying Ohm's law to find current going through each of the resistors. We apply Ohm law to R1 in order to find out the amps in that column, which once, ex the, once we execute is 0 is 0 0.086. After R1, we do the same with R2, which will yield 0 0.034. After R2, we will do the same with, with R3 which will yield 0 0.044 and after R3 we will do the same for R4. Executing this operation will result in 0 0.077. So the answer to this question is A, 77 milliamps. It must seem strange to you that despite telling you at the beginning of this talk that the purpose of this talk was to explain the math involved in calculating the value of the different elements in multiple resistors, direct current circuits, which include voltage, resistance, current, and power, that the talk has been going on for about an hour and I have not mentioned watts. The reason for this omission is simple. Once you know the values for voltage, current, and resistance of each resistor, determining the watts is simply done by applying one of the three versions of Joule's law which I am about to show you. The first version is W is equal to current multiplied by voltage. The second version is Watt is equal to amp square multiply by ohms and the third version is 
watt is equal to volts square divided by ohms. I will use an example to illustrate this point. This was one of the example circuits we used earlier on. As you can see, all values for volts, amps and ohms have already been determined. So at this point, in order to find watts, we add a row and label it P for power that, as you know, is measured in watts. We then look at the first resistor to answer the fundamental question about power and resistor, which is how much heat dissipates from a resistor in the form of power. And so we obtain the answer to this question by applying one of the versions of Joule's law that we have just explained. So if we use P is equal to I multiplied by E, the answer is 0 0.4 or 40, 40 milliwatts. If we use the version of P is equal to I squared multiplied by resistance, the answer still will be 0 0.4 watts. If we use the version of P is equal to E squared divided by R, the answer is obviously 0 0.4. And so we can choose on the version of Joule's law and execute the operation suggested in each resistor. This will result in 0.12 in the second resistor, 0.02 in the third resistor, and 0.18 watts will be the total power generated by the circuit. In conclusion, the purpose of this talk was to explain the math involved in calculating electromotive force, current, resistance, and watts of the different elements of a multiple resistor direct current circuit. I hope we have accomplished this. Thank you.